the movement to have black studies on predominantly white campuses happened in the late 1960s, and it was a convergence of two movements. It was the convergence of the uh, anti-Vietnam War movement and the black power movement. And both of these movements were um, spearheaded in great measure by um, young people and particularly by college students. And as a result of the convergence of these two movements, you had a lot of student activism. What led to Black Studies here at WashU was first the organizing of the black students here. Then, of course, there were white radicals on campus who uh, were supportive of these demands. The students took over Brookings uh, and issued a black manifesto. The black students did this in 1968. Ultimately, the school um, 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 acceded to the demands and um, created a black studies program in 1969. Well, I think black students were driven to demand this because they thought that the curriculum was too white. It was too Eurocentric. Um, you have to remember that what's going on at this time is that black students are uh, coming uh, in significant numbers uh, to white universities now, significant compared to the numbers that were before, which was virtually nothing. I was what you might call the beneficiary of these movements because um, beginning in about 1970, uh, many of these schools like the University of Pennsylvania and so forth increased the number of black students they were admitting and also gave them much greater support in order uh, to, get, to try to retain them and keep them at the university. I look back at that time now and I don't think, the major thing is not I don't see the students as being angry as much as I see an enormous kind of um, belief that this country could be better than it was and this country had an enormous potential to do good in the world and that it could change. And, th and that can only come from people who have an incredible sense of optimism about where they live. Mm -hmm.